we drove uh, to what was or is the worst part of town in my hometown and we pulled up to a house. I noticed that this house had no glass in the window. I knocked on the door, the folks inside opened the door and they had no furniture. And I remember thinking as we entered that house that this is what it really means to serve somebody. I think my journey of faith, um, like any story, uh, it's important to sort of talk about the beginning. And for me, uh, that started in a house um, where right and wrong was really important. In fact, it might have been more important than, than anything, um, which is a, a good thing to grow up with, but something that, that influenced was my understanding of faith. And so for me, my faith became about what was right and what was wrong and whether I was doing right or wrong and that that made me okay with God. And at some point later uh, in, my, uh, in my teenage years, I began to really question that, to question whether that was what it was really about. As I went off to college, one of the things that was important to me was that right or wrong. Um, I wanted to be right uh, and I wanted to do right things. As I began college, I began to struggle with whether faith was based on that. And I went preparing to go to law school to play baseball. Uh, but really what happened more than anything else at college was I really fell in love with Jesus. I fell in love with the gospel and I fell in love with what it means um, for people to be shaped and shaped by God and to be created in the image of God. Those things were there before um, in little ways and in big ways, but in, in during that time in my college years is where it really came together for me. I was already a believer, but I wasn't a very firm believer. I wasn't a very strong believer. And during those years, God shaped me. Um, he called me not only to know him better, um, to know fully what it means to love him and to serve him, but he called me to serve him in ministry too. Um, so I think that's the number one thing about passion and serving and passion in ministry is for us to be passionate about our relationship with Jesus. It's easy to let that to let that dole out and for us just to show up and to do what we think we ought to do, but it's about far more than that. So our relationship with Jesus, I think for me, is more important than anything else. And, and that, that relationship leads to the passion of ministry. One of the things I firmly believe is that people who are followers of Jesus have the ability to be the hands and feet of Jesus um, to the world around them. And so as I think about my calling and I think about my faith, one of the things that I realize is, is that although I may not have had a great understanding of what the gospel was, I was being shaped by what I believe to be the true gospel is. Um, and so when I was planning to go to law school, to be a lawyer, um, one of the things that I did during the summers was I worked for my grandmother um, in high school and in college. And, um, I would go to court with her and I would visit clients with her and I think it was my very first summer and it may have been the first or second week and um, people had been coming into the office and I had gone to the courthouse with her and things like that. Um, but we were going to go visit somebody and she needed to make a client visit and so I rode with her and we went and I remember thinking as we left, you know, that one day I want to be this rich lawyer, I'm going to have all this success, I'm going to have all this stuff. And I was thinking about that and um, we drove uh, to what was or is the worst part of town in my hometown and we pulled up to a house and uh, as we walked up uh, to the house, I noticed that this house had no glass in the window and I asked my grandma if we were sure we were in the right place did anybody really live there and and as we were uh, as we as we got our, to the door I knocked on the door the folks inside opened the door 
and they had no furniture in their living room. Uh, it was just a floor. Um, they had one or two chairs, and uh, the, the father of the family was in terrible physical shape, and they had another family member that was in rough physical shape, and they were already sitting in the chairs, and they offered the chair to my grandmother, and she refused uh, to take it. And I remember thinking as we entered that house that this is what it really means to serve somebody. Those people couldn't afford a lawyer. I don't know what they needed my grandma for, but she went never expecting any money for that. And I remember we sat on the floor and we talked to them about what they needed and the help that they needed, and we left. And I realized that that is what it really meant to serve somebody. And that shaped me. That shaped me in really powerful ways. Um, and it has taught me th throughout my life and throughout my ministry about what real success in ministry is. There are times where we think that a successful ministry means so many people in a building, or it means so many people having converted to faith because of what we said. But what success in ministry looks like is having the heart to sit down on somebody's floor and know that you're never gonna get anything out of it, but to be able to serve them and love them. And I think more than anything else, that, that event, that moment has shaped me and my ministry, and I hope will always shape my ministry. I think in terms of greatest victories for me, in terms of ministry, um, I think of a few specific things. Uh, none of them, I don't know that anybody else would would jump up and down about or get excited about certainly didn't make any newspapers or anything like that but again I think success in ministry isn't about numbers it's about what really happens in the hearts of people and so for me I think when I think about victories one of the things that I rejoice in is the moments that my children who have confessed faith in Jesus have done that I think about those moments and those moments are important. Uh, when our oldest believed in Jesus, we were eating a hamburger at Fuddruckers in St. Louis, Missouri, and he began to talk about how much he loved Jesus, and that's where he confessed faith in Jesus for the first time. And our next oldest, London, believed on the way to church one Sunday morning, actually, before we even left the house, and began to talk about that. Those are great successes that, that I just rejoice in and that, that, um, that I thank God for. As a hospice chaplain, I've had a lot of people ask me if I've been able to convert people to faith and how many people I've won to Christ. And uh, to be completely honest with you, that doesn't happen very often. Uh, they are few and, and far between. By the time that most people get to that point in life, they've made up their mind about Jesus. But what I have seen is I have seen family members who haven't talked to each other in 20 or 30 years begin to talk to one another again. I've seen fathers tell sons that they love them for the first time. I've seen daughters tell mothers that they're sorry and that they love them for the first time in decades. Those are great successes. When people are willing to be honest about what is going on within them, things that we hide easy, things that we cover up, and I think it would be even a greater success if the end of life didn't have to lead to that. But it's still a success even then. But it'd be great if it happened sooner. But I think anybody who's been in ministry for very long or even serving in the church vocationally or otherwise in church for very long has gotten to the point maybe at some times where they've either felt burned out a little bit or they, they become a little bit cynical. And I'm sort of naturally a cynical person anyway, and so it, 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 it may be, maybe I need this more than anybody else. But for me, what, what keeps me passionate is serving other people. Um, I love scripture. I love to preach. I love those things. Um, I love worship. I love to lead people, and I love to lead a church. Um, but I can do those things 
without passion, so to speak. Um, doesn't mean they're going to be good, but I can do them without passion. But what really gives me passion, what really gives me energy, what really excites me about ministry is being able to serve another person. And that can be a million different things. It can be a million different things, but serving them where they're at and really listening to them. Sometimes we, we assume that we know how to serve somebody and we just show up and we think that they need this thing or we think that we've got to give them this or we think that we ought to do this for them and we haven't even asked them the very simple question of what's your name and how are you doing? How's life going for you and how can I help you? And if we ask those questions and we'll shut up long enough to really listen, people will tell us what they need and then we have a chance to not only serve the physical needs that they have going on in their life, but if we listen to them, we, we hear what's going on within their heart and their mind and we're able to really meet them where they're at and serve them. And when I'm able to do that, when I stop and pause and really listen to people and then I'm able to serve them be, through that, it makes me passionate about Christ. It makes me passionate about the church. It makes me passionate about the gospel and about doing ministry.